Okay, so welcome to this video. Uh, in this video we are going to um, have a blast from the past. We're going to uh, look at the bolzano weierstrass theorem, which is a really important theorem in basic real analysis. Uh, and the reason we're going to do this is that uh, I don't think our discussion of uh, complete metric spaces will be complete uh, without a proof that the real line is complete. So I want to prove to you basically that all Cauchy sequences with in the real line converge, and the easiest way that I know of doing that is uh, using the bolzano weierstrass theorem. So firstly, I just want to uh, remind you of the bolzano weierstrass theorem, and that's what this video is about. So the bolzano weierstrass theorem. Okay, so uh, the bolzano weierstrass theorem is basically that if you take a sequence of real numbers, so here is the real line here, and you have some sequence x n. Uh, which, well, let's say x, let's call the sequence x, which is a sequence of real numbers. So we have x1, x2, x3, etc. And you can go on and on. So we have xn, the arbitrary term. Uh, so here we are. Here are these uh, numbers in the real line. And this sequence, right, uh, so uh, there's a basic condition for the bolzano weierstrass theorem to apply, that the sequence needs to be uh, bounded. So uh, the meaning of a sequence being bounded in the real line is exactly the same as the meaning uh, if you uh, use the metric space definitions. Uh, but obviously the uh, definition of bounded in the real numbers came before metric spaces. Uh, and indeed the definition of bounded in all the other metric spaces is based on bounded in the real line. Uh, so um, what you can think of as uh, bounded, uh, a nice way of thinking of bounded in the real line is that there is some number, big M, which is greater than all the terms. So there is a big M, there exists a big M, uh, which is greater than all of these terms, such that uh, big M is greater than uh, or equal to xn for all n is an element of the natural numbers. So whichever term of this sequence you pick, all of them basically are less than this big N, less than or equal to this big N. So big N is called an upper bound uh, for the sequence, upper bound for the sequence. Now, uh, bounded is stronger than just having an upper bound uh, do dear, do dear, four sequence. Uh, bounded means that you need to have a lower bound as well, and the lower bound is uh, the exact opposite of an upper bound. So it's some, let's call it little m, uh, which is smaller than all of the um, all of the um, numbers terms of the sequence. So there exists a little m such that little m is less than or equal to x n for all n is an element of the natural numbers, i.e. All of the terms of the sequence are greater than little m, so they're or greater than or equal to little m. So little m is known as a lower bound, and uh, so this is known as a lower bound for the sequence. Lower bound for the sequence. And if a sequence is bounded, it means that it's bounded above and it's bounded below. So there exists an upper bound and there exists a lower bound, basically, for this sequence. Okay, so that is what uh, bounded means. And the bolzano weierstrass theorem concerns these sequences which are bounded, i.e. sequences which you have two uh, numbers uh, and the whole sequence is contained within the interval bound between those two numbers, basically. Okay, uh, so the bolzano weierstrass theorem says that if a sequence is bounded, if a sequence is bounded, such as uh, this x that we have up here, if a sequence, if a sequence is bounded, uh, then it has a convergent subsequence. Then it has a convergent subsequence. Okay, and I'm going to tell you exactly what that means. Don't worry, convergent subsequence. Right. Okay. Uh, so, uh, what the first thing we need to discuss is that if a sequence is bounded, it does not imply that it's convergent. So, uh, for instance, if I take the sequence uh, which just flits uh, between 0 and 1, so the sequence 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1 etc., you just flip between the two, then if I take the numbers minus 1 and 2, and I call 2 my big M, and minus 1 my little m, then these are, the, minus 1 is a lower bound because it is uh, less than or equal to all the terms of the sequence. Uh, it's less than or equal to all the terms of the sequence because all the terms of the sequence are just zeros or ones. So minus 1 is certainly less than or equal to all of those. In fact, you could have picked your lower bound as being zero. That would still satisfy the definition that it was less than or equal to all of the terms of the sequence. Uh, and big M we've chosen to be 2. But again, we could have picked it to be 1 if you wanted 
wanted. That's the most extreme case uh, that you could have picked. Uh, but two, uh, it does the job perfectly well. It's greater than or equal to all the terms of the sequence, which are just zero and one. Uh, so this is a bounded sequence, bounded sequence, but it certainly doesn't have a limit. It's not getting closer to anything. Uh, bounded sequence, but has no limit. But has no limit. So the bolzano weierstrass theorem basically says that, okay, it doesn't have a limit, but there exists a subsequence, this word here, subsequence, which I'm going to tell you exactly what a subsequence is, there exists a subsequence which does have a limit, basically, is what uh, the bolzano weierstrass theorem says. So what is a subsequence then? So if we take our sequence, our abstract sequence, x, which is equal to x1, x2, x3, x4, etc., then, if you want to construct a subsequence, let's call this new sub uh, this new sequence S, and it's going to be a subsequence of this sequence here. What you do is you just pick certain terms out of here. So you have to pick a first term for this sequence. You go along and you decide: Do I want x1 in my subsequence? Maybe I'll decide no. Do I want x2 in my subsequence? Maybe I'll decide no. Do I want x3? Okay, I'll have x3. So I'll put x3 as my first term. Then you go on and you say: Do I want x4? Do I want x5? No. Do I want x6? Yes, I'll have x6. And then you can go on and on, and I might just take the, I might just take, you know, the multiples of 3. So I could take x3, x6, x9, x12, x15, etc. This would be a subsequence. Basically, what you do is you skip out some of the terms, and uh, you just pick a certain collection of the terms, but they have to remain in order like this. So I can't have something like x6, x3. That's rubbish. You have to keep them in order. Uh, basically, all you do is you say, okay, I'll have this one, then you go along, pick a ne your next one, go along, pick a next one. That's the concept of a subsequence of a sequence x. Okay, uh, so what the boltzano weierstrass firm says is that if this sequence x is bounded, i.e. it's between some little m and some big M, then it's possible to pick a subsequence, pick these terms correctly, such that this subsequence will converge to a limit. And we can see that that's plainly true in this case, because if I pick a subsequence for this case, I could just pick the sequence, I could say, okay, we'll have zero, then we'll skip out this one here, and we'll go to the next one, let's have zero. And then we'll skip out this one, and we'll go to the next one, we'll have zero. So I could get a sequence, and I could just pick out the zeros. So I'll get a sequence of zeros, and zero, the, sequence, the constant sequence of zero certainly converges to something. It converges to zero. Uh, so this is a subsequence which has a, uh, a limit. So what we have said is that, okay, this sequence here, it might not converge, uh, but it does have a it does have a subsequence, which does have a limit, basically. Okay, and the bolzano weierstrass theorem basically says that if x is a bounded sequence, it is always, always possible to find a uh, convergent subsequence, i.e. it's always possible to pick your terms, pick a, a subset of the terms, put them in order so that you get a sequence, uh, a subsequence, and if you take the limit of that sequence, it will exist, basically. It's always possible to do that if uh, the, uh, if the uh, sequence, the original sequence, is bounded. Okay, and in the next video we will prove this statement.